Furthermore, in Islam, a woman even inherits. In many religions, the woman is not allowed to inherit. She does not have any share in the property left behind by her family members. But in Islam, the woman inherits. There are on many occasions where non-Muslims they object and they say, fine, in Islam women do inherit, but why do they inherit half? Trying to say that Islam subjugates the woman. But if you analyze the logic behind it, you'll understand the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of our Creator, Almighty God. As I mentioned a few minutes earlier, in Islam, it is the man who bears the financial burden. Before a woman is married, it is the father and the brother. After she's married, it is the husband and the son who looks after her lodging, boarding, clothing, and all financial aspects. If you read the Quran, the inheritance is given in several places. In Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 180. In Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 240. In Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 79. In Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 19. In Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 33. In Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 106 to 108. In several places. But the most specific share division is given in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 11 and 12. Where it says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained that in what you leave your wealth for your children, the sons get double the share of the daughters. If only daughters, two or more, they share into third. If only one, she gets half. The verse continues, in what you leave for your parents, each get one-sixth if you have children. The mother gets one-third if there are no children. And the verse continues, in what your wives leave for you, you get half if there are no children. You get one-fourth if there are children. What you leave for your wives, they get one-fourth if there are no children. They get one-eighth if you have children. Don't confuse yourself. Go back home, open the Quran, Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 11 and 12. Easy. I do agree that most of the times, the women inherit half the amount what the men inherit. But there are occasions when they inherit equal, for example, one-sixth both for the parents, for mother and father, if they have children. But if they don't have children, mother gets one-third. That means double than that of the father. But I do agree with you, as a whole, most of the times, the woman inherit half. Son gets double than that of the daughter. Husband gets double than that of the wife, most of the time. What is the logic behind it? The logic is, as I mentioned, since man is the person who takes the financial burden. And suppose there's a person who dies. And after giving the shares of the other people, if $150,000 or 150,000 rupees is balanced for the children, after giving the shares of the other relatives, if 150,000 dollars, 150,000 rupees is balanced, and that man has got one daughter and one son, the son will get 100,000 dollars, 100,000 rupees, and the daughter will get 50,000 dollars or 50,000 rupees. People will say injustice. Why did the daughter get half? But the logic behind it is, the man has the financial burden. I am asking a question: Would you want to inherit 100,000 dollars? 100,000 rupees and spend 80 or 90% of that what have inherited on the family if you are a man or would you prefer inheriting $50,000 or 50,000 rupees and not spending a single penny or single paisa on the family? If you are a man and if you inherit $100,000, 100,000 rupees, maybe 80 or 90% goes on the family. What is left with you? 10,000, 20,000 rupees or dollars. If you are a woman, you get $50,000 or 50,000 rupees, 100 percent you keep for yourself. So would you prefer inheriting 100,000 and keeping only 10, 20,000 with you, or would you prefer inheriting 50,000 and keeping everything with you? If Allah would have given equal amount to both, then I would have to give a talk on men's rights in Islam. 
when Allah has given the right, he is even equal. If he has put the financial burden on the men, he sees to it that the men get double. Otherwise, it will be injustice. And the Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 40, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never unjust in the least degree. So if you know the hikmah behind it, you'll realize that the guidance given by our Creator is the best. Just because the women in Islam are financially more secured than the men, what would you say? The women in Islam, are they protected or are they subjugated?